Hello, everyone. Welcome to the December 2016 uh, monthly community call for the Transmart Foundation. Uh, it's been a, a great year. Uh, this is our final broadcast for 2016. Uh, and uh, I know we've had a lot of, a lot of developments, a lot of interesting uh, uh, activities uh, across the foundation during this year. And uh, we're looking forward to kicking off 2017. Uh, today, uh, we're going to talk uh, about an update about the on the foundation. Uh, Keith will give us that and a quick review of the roadmap. Uh, we'll just finish uh, kind of our last discussion. I'll mention a couple of things about the annual meeting and the recordings and their availability. Uh, and then we'll jump into the uh, to the to, uh, announce the beta test of the next release, 16.2 release of the platform and give you a, a status update. Peter Reich will give us an update on where we are there. So um, let's get started. Uh, Keith will jump in now and give us a uh, an update uh, on the foundation. Keith? Great. Thanks, Rudy. Um, I, I hope I don't break up too much. I think I'm having some bandwidth challenges today. If I do, let me know. Um, but thanks, everyone, for coming. I think it's been a, a really busy year at the foundation. Uh, as we go into the holidays, uh, it's, it's been a year where we've gotten a lot done, uh, and there's certainly a lot left to do. Uh, one of the great things that we've done this year is, is we had our 16.1 release, which was the first uh, release in, in our uh, quality governance program, our co-governance program. Uh, uh, and I was very happy to see that released with uh, a nice installer so you can quickly install the platform. Uh, you can also uh, install data with over 100 data sets released that can be loaded directly in. I think it really changes the nature of the platform. Uh, with the 16.2 release that you're going to hear about today, uh, I think this marks another new milestone, uh, new features that have been developed uh, out in the community, integrated into the platform by following you know, some good code governance, uh, codes, coding standards, uh, and have been submitted to our testing and having our beta test now. The one thing I did want to give you a quick update on is the 17.1. The 17.1 uh, represents the, the first sponsored project that we've done where we've brought together four companies. Uh, that have sponsored uh, development for the platform, uh, mainly focused on building some new infrastructure uh, on the back end uh, around three different modules. That program is, is going, uh, going well. Uh, we currently, uh, just this, today, approved our third milestone of four. Uh, and as we go into the new year, uh, we'll be fin finishing up the project, going through acceptance testing, and getting to our final milestone um, towards the end of January. So I'm very happy with where that project is and where that's going. It's been a, 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 big, uh, a big year in terms of, of getting those things done. Another key thing that's been very interesting this year has been uh, our close collaboration with the I2B2 Foundation. Uh, we've seen a couple of key advancements in the I2B2 uh, Transmart activities. Paula Viax Group at Harvard uh, put out uh, both the National Health and Nutrition Survey from the CDC, 42,000 patients worth of data in a pilot I2B2 Transmart, uh, as well as a rare patient uh, genetic disease registry working with NCATS, which brought together nine different rare diseases into a single unified patient registry. Uh, we think uh, further collaboration with the I2B2 Foundation uh, is, is certainly in the future for the Transmart Foundation. We're really happy to be working with them more closely. Uh, and keeping Transmart uh, well tied into the ITB to B2 data infrastructure. So uh, you'll hear more about uh, some of the synergies we've had there. Uh, the successful meeting we had uh, last summer with the Precision Medicine uh, Initiative at Harvard. Um, and as we go forward into the new year, uh, we're looking at doing some additional work in the ITB2 and Transmart uh, synergy area. So it's been, a, uh, it's been a long year, a busy year, I think a very good year. And as we go into the new year, a lot of exciting developments with the 16.2 release and the 17.1 development. Uh, we're looking forward to uh, a, a nice release with 17.1 mid next year uh, and to, to a, a lot of new developments. I want to thank everyone for your continued commitment to the foundation and your continued uh, work and effort, uh, particularly those that have been involved in the project management committees for 16.1, 16.2, and the technical steering committee uh, for the 17.1. There's been a lot, of, a lot of good effort from a lot of people across the community, and it's really the people contributing to these projects uh, that make them work. Uh, so with that, I'd like to thank everyone you know, for, for their effort this year. I wish you all a happy holidays, and uh, look forward to uh, some new advancements next year. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Keith. 
Oh, you know what? We're not. We, I was not showing the slides. So I'm really sorry about that. <clears throat> okay. All those great slides that I had. You didn't show I know. Them. I know. <laughs> I just did it. All right. I was going to say a few more words about the the annual meeting. Um, we um, we held it in uh, La Jolla. It was um, a really really good meeting. Um, the, the the content I think was was very good. I think the, the feedback was wonderful. Um, and I thank our sponsors one more time uh, for for their support, which really made it possible. Um, but I wanted to highlight that you know we we had some really good keynote speakers um, who presented some some very very exciting talks there. Uh, and we had uh, uh, nine different tracks uh, of topics, you know, covering scientific applications, uh, information on the on the platform, uh, and uh, future technologies, um, and a number of you know, open bell, a uh, number of very interesting things. And all this has been captured for us and, and made available. So if you go to the website to the annual meeting page, I just wanted to highlight that uh, you know there, there's a lot of information here, in particular. You know, if you go to the to the table of the speakers for for each talk, uh, we're we've been trying to gather all the slides and all the videos. And you know, if you click on you know a slide deck, you will get the um, the uh, PDF of the slides uh, for you to look at and download. Uh, you know, uh, get to review it again. Uh, if also you click on the video link, you get into our YouTube channel, which actually shows the the video, very high quality video that the UCSD AV staff. Uh, took for us and, and made available. Um, I, I want to just take a, a, a short digression here because uh, some of you may or may not realize that we do have a pretty active YouTube channel. Uh, all the videos are available through our website in the particular you know topical areas, but we also maintain uh, a, a YouTube channel for the foundation uh, that we've got right now 110 subscribers, over 14,000 views you know of our stuff, and, and we maintain 15 different playlists. Which um, you know, which uh, you, you can go to and, and look at. Um, for for example, uh, you know these, these different uh, playlists include you know all of these monthly meetings going back to 2013. So I have you know, the last meeting in 2013, and then all the meetings for the last three years uh, have been captured, and the slide decks and the videos are available here. Uh, the annual meeting, starting with the Ann Arbor meeting, the last three, the videos and the slide decks are all been recorded and uh, these are available uh, again on the YouTube channel as well as a number of our special events. So the datathons we've had, the, all the training classes that we run uh, are recorded and put here uh, in, the, uh, in the training um, uh, uh, playlist. The, uh, the, the datathon that we ran with uh, on the neurodegenerative disease is there and also the I2B2 symposium at Harvard uh, in June. Uh, all the recordings from that are here. So a wealth of information, a lot of interesting stuff you can get here and, you know, actually, you know, click through these things. And, you know, we are loading now all of the talks from the, the UCSD meeting. They're not all there yet, but we have all the recordings and uh, they are uh, coming through, you know, into the into the website. So please, you know, take advantage of this. There's a lot of good information. Uh, the feedback was, was just wonderful for a lot, you know, these talks and you know, a lot of really good, uh, good presentations. So. Um, and a little note to any of your speakers who are there, if you haven't given me your slide deck yet, uh, now would be a good time to send it to me. So, so I wanted to say on the, the meeting, uh, please you know, take advantage of this resource. I think there's a lot of good stuff out there, a lot of the hard work that um, the community has put together. So now I'll turn our attention to Transmart 16.2. Uh, we are in beta. Uh, the, the release has been packaged and put out uh, in the, on our test servers. Um, just to remind you, there, there's a lot of capability here uh, where 16.1 was largely, you know, uh, in, in a lot of ways, a maintenance release. It did a lot of um, a lot of good work uh, pulling together uh, a lot of updates, a lot of changes. Um, there really wasn't a lot of new things. And so here uh, in the 16.2, we've got a number of new capabilities that have come in, smart RX that uh, in integration, a number of enhancements with GWAS. Um, uh, some new capabilities in their omics piece from Johnson Johnson, uh, Metacore and Genome Browser, you know, back in and ETL improvements. Uh, if you look across here, I mean, a lot of organizations have, have stepped up and contributed pieces to this. Uh, and it's, you know, using our new development process, the, the PMC 
framework, we've we've gotten you know a lot of these pieces all pulled together uh, and assembled into to this release, and so we're really excited about it. There's a you know a lot of you know really cool things here that I think will be of interest uh, across the community. Um, we did get into beta uh, two weeks ago or so, and we're hoping that you know depending on what we see in the next next few days or weeks, you know the PMC will be able to, to actually move this to a final release. Uh, it's available on our wiki. Uh, again, if you go to our website under the platform tab down in the public demo area, it brings you to the wiki page and there you see the beta, the link to the beta test uh, right there. And it's also listed on the slide. Uh, and this will bring you right into the beta um, the demo site. Um, we're also working on the scripted installer and uh, all the other bits are, are coming together. So this will be and over the next, you know, week or so, hopefully this will be, um, you know, all in, uh, assembled for you, and uh, you'll be able to, to take a look at this. So now I'm going to turn it over to Peter, who's going to. Uh, he's really been serving as our release manager uh, for 16.2, uh, all the heavy lifting, uh, and so he will be uh, talking about um, the release and uh, going through a set of slides for us. So I'm going to switch over and make sure Peter is unmuted. Okay, Peter, can you hear? Hi. There you go. Can I get the slides back up yes, here? Yes, Rudy. There you go. Yes, it's fun doing the heavy lifting. Once you've lifted things and put them down, it's the testers who've been going through actually checking they're in the right place. <laughs> Thanks very much to everyone who's been testing this. It is getting late in the year for it, and I, I see people are putting small reports into to JIRA today as well of, uh, of issues that are, are coming up, which we'll work our way through. Haven't seen any, any real showstoppers yet that can't be sorted. So a, a quick overview to fit everybody in where we are. As Rudy said, um, release 16.2 includes a lot of new plugins. So where 16.1 was really a, a bug fix release, it was a year since the previous uh, release that we'd done, and we cleaned up the code, fixed a lot of bugs, uh, made sure that we got everything working, had a very extensive beta testing, alpha and beta testing period for that, that extended over a number of months. 16.2 um, has been a bit cleaner in the sense that um, the Etrix project started off making a version and testing it. So we started testing there uh, back in July, August. So there's hopefully less to find in the, the beta testing that we're going through now. A lot of new plugin features has really put a list up. Um, we've restored a couple of plugins that we dropped from 16.1. The Genome Browser and uh, Metacore plugins are, are back and we're aiming to support those. We put some bug fixes into things that had been found since 16.1. Um, some of those were changes to the R packages that we used, for example. So they weren't transmart bugs, just general maintenance and keeping things up to date. Can I have the next slide, please? So the first update that everybody will notice is that the Analyze tab or Dataset Explorer interface has changed. So this is the old interface that we had in 16.1. Uh, that we've grown to love. Uh, and you have three, two subsets and you have three options for each one. If you go to the next slide, this is the new one. So you have one choice for each subset. And when you drop something in there, it then expands and gives you the next choice and the next choice and carries on until everything is full. So it's much cleaner and easier to use. It had been um, used by Etrix for a while. I expect that some other people had tried it as well. Um, and definitely an improvement. So here we've, we've selected age ranges and some other uh, variables. And you can drop those in and just populate the subsets as you go. Uh, next slide. So this is a list of the, the major new features that are, are going in. HiDome is a high dimensional data query uh, facility. Smart R is interactive advanced workflows. Not all the workflows are covered yet, but some of the most important ones are there already. There are two plugins that deal with um, image data. One of them imports clinical data from XNAT into uh, Transmart so that you can use it in queries. And one links us, um, individuals in Transmart to the images that are stored in XNAT so you can go and browse through the image data. 
and they, they kind of complement each other. We've had updates from Pfizer, who've been updating their GWAS code internally. We've been merging the Pfizer internal code changes back into Transmart 16.2. We've had a contribution from Thomson Reuter or Clarivate of their uh, P-Link integration as well. And there's a, a new workflow for Ingenuity Pathway Analysis, which is added to SmartR. Next slide, please. So this is SmartR, which runs interactive analysis. So here we're running the um, a heat map workflow. And we've selected a cohort of uh, asthmatics against controls in the subset lists. We've dropped some high dimensional data in. We click fetch data at the bottom. And we can put some other things in to annotate the graph if we wish. Click fetch data, next slide. And up comes a graph, and not only a graph a heat map, but it's interactive. You can mouse over it. In the bottom right, there's a control panel. You can add clustering to it interactively. You can refresh various uh, parameters and just run again without having to export all the data. And so I find generally things run much faster and much more easily with, uh, with SmartR than they do with the, the standard heat map. And I, as we go through testing, I spend a fair bit of time going from one version to the other and comparing them to see which one I like the best. And this is, is certainly uh, a nice one, although I sometimes wonder how easy it is to keep track of which options you chose. There's so much choice in SmartR, but it, that's a nice problem to have. Can I have the next slide, please? So the other one that's really noticeable is the High Dome edition from uh, Denny Fabake at uh, Janssen uh, in collaboration with uh, other, other users, uh, other developers around eTrix partners and at the Hive. Uh, next slide, I can show what it does. <coughs> so High Dome is a system that lets you drop in high dimensional data, in this case, ovarian cancer expression data. Drop that into the subset selection, and then you can use it for subset selection just like anything else. So it gives you a pop-up box. You can select to search by gene symbol because it's expression data. You can type gene names in that auto-complete. You have a choice of uh, which data values to use. You have a slider to select the expression range you want to search by. And it starts with the, the full range of expression that you have available in the samples. You can limit that to those that are um, below zero, above zero, etc. And you can type numbers into the box. You can use the sliders. You can adjust <coughs> the number of bins to see what's happening. Uh, next slide. I uh, was hoping there'd be another slide in that showed you what happened next. So you, you basically you see the gene expression data appearing in the summary statistics, and you can drop expression data in or other high dimensional data in from anywhere else into summary statistics, and statistics will pop up. I've got the short version of the talk here. Okay, next slide, please. So these are the other plugins we've got. The XNAT viewer is the one that allows you to go to XNAT and, and see image data. Uh, so the test data we have is uh, is brain scans, but you can have any image data that's that's in XNAT. Uh, XNAT Importer allows you to import derived data from XNAT into Transmart, so you can query by it and choose the individuals that match the particular criteria for your subsets. Um, the Pfizer GWAS updates I went through. I think I, I reviewed these briefly already. Next slide, please. So some bug fixes we put in. Um, survival analysis is one where um, nobody seemed to notice, but there's a table at the bottom that's got no data in it. And that's because the output from the R package had changed. So if we go to the next slide. Yeah, now we can put data in there. Uh, it's where the first few columns are identical. It was only putting one number instead of multiple, so we can pick that up. Um, so we need a way to go through and, and check that everything that we we know and love is still working the same way as we go to new versions, because um, things like the R package versions are, are slightly beyond our control and get installed locally and anybody could have a later version. We need to test with the latest ones and make sure that we catch these things. There weren't very many things like that in doing 16.2, I have to say. 
Uh, next slide. We've made a few enhancements in ETL, so there were some of the studies on our curated data page on the wiki which are flagged as being difficult to install because they're rather large. Um, we've uh, amended the um, store procedures so that they can handle large uh, studies, at least of that size, much more easily now than they did before. We're going through testing those again just to see how much they improve loading of other studies. Sometimes things load the same speed, sometimes they may be slightly slower, but the, the big studies go in better than they did before. Uh, next slide. And another another improvement that's coming is that we now have a script that which can populate the browse tab metadata. So when you're loading these studies, we'll be able to release data with 16.2 that you can then load up and populate the browse tab with metadata about each of the studies. Um, that'll make it much easier to query and handle large numbers of studies. So if you have 80 or more studies loaded as we do with eTrix, it's possible to do a query and just get the study of interest and then the, the tree looks much smaller while you're expanding and working your way through. Um, so we're using that to transfer browse tab data across multiple servers and we can use that to publish, uh, to publish at least a first guess of the metadata for studies. We need someone to go through and curate it carefully and then hopefully we can add a, a target and load it automatically once the data has been curated for us. And I'm looking for, for volunteers to test that. Next slide. And so, yes, so we had some database update scripts that we built for Transmart 16.1. We're doing the same for Transmart 16.2. Um, the slide refers to eTrix version 3, which is, is 16.1 and a bit, 16.2. And we used those procedures when we updated the eTrix server, and they went through pretty easily. Uh, you do need to go through by hand and, and just check that everything's okay, but going through by hand wasn't too difficult. And they take a lot of the hard work out. And so quite a few sites can now update um, Transmart in place. They don't have to reload everything when they go to a new version, which is rather essential if you want everyone to adopt the latest version each time. So we will release scripts for going from 16.1 to 16.2, and we'll need a volunteer to test on Oracle and check that we can update on Oracle the same way. With 16.1, we only had a Postgres version of those scripts. No Oracle user surfaced and, uh, and asked for an Oracle version. I'm sure we can find somebody who can test those for us. And is there another slide? Yeah, so we've added another 20 curated data sets, so we're well over 100 now. On, uh, on the library server, and if you go to the, the wiki page, just put search for curated data on the wiki and you'll get the um, links to all the data sets, which diseases they cover, and which uh, high dimensional data sets they have with them. We've got a promise of some more data to add um, that we can use for um, testing TCGA data and some exact image data that we'll be able to use for testing as well. And more, more contributions of data are always welcome. Next slide. So just in summary, as, as Rudy said, if you go to the public servers, there's a release test server that we're testing, beta testing now, which is Postgres test. Um, the latest code base is only for developers who really want to see the impact of the latest changes. Um, it's Postgres CI for continuous integration. And we have a demo server, Postgres demo, which currently is, is the last release, which is 16.1. Uh, as soon as we have 16.2 released, we will, of course, update that to be running 16.2. Hopefully very early in the, the new year. So we will keep you posted on exactly when we can release 16.2. There's some acknowledgments from everyone who's been involved in the development and in the testing. Um, testers especially, we're really grateful for the efforts. It's one thing to develop something and try it quickly, and yes, it seems to be all right. You need testers who can go in and, and try something new and try the sort of things they really want to do with Transmart and make sure that it, it does what they need as well. 
uh, we're very, very grateful for their time. Okay. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you Peter. Much. Thank you. Um, so uh, let me just echo what what Peter said that uh, we we certainly would would really could really use uh, your assistance. You know, can they online uh, try to to run this through its paces? Really, not just uh, the the top level push the buttons, but really you know bring some data sets in and and do some analysis to see you know what you find. Um, we, we want this to be, you know, as, as high quality as we can. That that's only going to be that way if, if you all have a chance to, you know, if you can spend any time in the, in the next you know, week, two weeks uh, looking at the system and, um, you know, give us your feedback. So, um, again, thanks to, to everyone who's worked on this. You can see it's quite a list of contributors. Um, and it's really, you know, this, this, this is the point of having an open source community uh, to be able to get, you know, this level of, you um, support and contribution and um, you know we're really looking forward to having this release finished and out there so with that um, I'll open it up to questions uh, I will uh, monitoring the uh, control panel here you can raise your hand and I'll let you ask the question uh, verbally if you like if you'd like to type in a question into the question window we can do it that way as well uh, I have a couple questions already um, Oh, this question about where's the where, where are the slides? Yeah, okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay. So, is there an Oracle test server? There isn't an Oracle test server just yet. Um, we can set one up. We still have the old BT Oracle servers that we can use as database servers, right. and point to those. So, I'm looking to to set up an Oracle server there, and test. So I, this has come from Sanofi, and I know Sanofi always run on, on Oracle and Fires and other farmers. Yes, we will set up an Oracle test server and check with new database load works and check functionality in Oracle as well. Okay. Um, so one of the things that we've been trying to do yeah. a little bit of on that is uh, get some support for those efforts. So we, we currently don't have any support from Oracle or, or anyone else on those elements, so it's sort of an in-kind contribution. But if anybody would like to find a way to, to help get support for testing in Oracle or testing on Red Hat Enterprise Linux, we'd be happy to talk to you about that. Okay, uh, there's a question about the distribution of these slides. The slide deck will be available uh, later today uh, on our website. There's a, a place in the, in the community meetings under the research tab, I think. Uh, and all of the all the community meetings, both the slide decks and the recordings, are there. And uh, I will have these up and running this afternoon. So please go take a look at that. Um, we have a question: Are the art are the ATLs tools working like before? Uh, for example, TM data loader. Yes, I've tried the latest TM data loader. Uh, so TM data loader the latest version, you still need to make some updates to the database, um, follow the TN data loader instructions. And then, yeah, I've loaded um, expression and ACGH data with it. And it, it worked very nicely. I did have some discussions with um, Thompson Reuter about whether we could maybe configure the database to be already set up for TN data loader. Um, we haven't done that in time for 16.2, but it, it would be nice to actually include the changes so you didn't have to do any extra updates. Okay. So possibly in a, we could update later on sometime next year and configure the database ready for TM data loader. I'd rather like to test it that way so that I know that it doesn't break any other ETLs. It shouldn't from the way it's set up. Okay. Um, oh, and I also, I'm also hoping to go through the data sets that we've got, curated data sets and reconfigure those to load with TM data loader, which is a case of rearranging them in the right directories and setting the right parameters there. Okay. There's a question, is it possible to log in with a demo account into the demo server? Yes, there's a guest password. It's on the wiki. It's right there. Log in as, as guest and transmart 2016 is the password. As the wiki says, if you've if you're in as admin, you can log out, and then it'll log you in again, and you can just change to that. Okay. Um, Heike, did you have a question from Sanofi? 
uh, unmuted you if you want to ask it. Just... No, I, I just had the question with the Oracle server that we don't get new surprises when we install the <laughs> latest version. So we are still working on 16.1. It's still not totally installed. So we are in production, but we still find new bugs there. Okay. Well, just and, please, and please, getting those bug reports from Sanofi and making sure they're, yeah. they're in 16.2. Please, please keep reporting and them. We are volunteering to test the scripts for 16.2, but I'm not sure when we are ready. <laughs> That's the issue. Sure. sure. Okay. I'll just add the, the key thing there is if, if, if we can make sure that anyone who's doing um, any testing or has been running 16.1 can report those bugs. Uh, Peter, I think the, the instructions for reporting in JIRA are on the wiki. Yes, um, or you can click in the, the bottom corner, the report a bug option, and it'll take you to JIRA. The key thing is if we don't have bug reports, if we don't have bug reports, we can't fix them. So please make sure you report those bugs. <clears throat> Another question is, are the modifier known by I2B2 now implemented? That's really a question for 17.1. Yeah. yeah, that's that's part of the 17.1 development. Okay. Will Transmart Batch also work with version 16.2? Uh, yes, I'm going through adding some tests, but there's there's no major changes to the database. <clears throat> okay. Stephen Wicks is asking, um, is there any trouble loading the hat map data? Uh, no, it's just a case of finding time. Okay. That's the test data for the GWASP right. link. It, right, right, right. And uh, Jan Christopher is asking, the modifier enables you to pre-size an item further, for example, that a diagnosis is a main diagnosis or an additional diagnosis. But I think that's, again, back to the I2B2 question. Yeah. So but that's we, we will not be having any of that implemented here, right? OK. Um, that's all the questions I see. If anybody wants to raise your hand, I'll just unmute you. You can ask it verbally. Don't see anyone else. Any other questions? Hey, Rudy. Um, yes. I'm happy to comment really quickly on the I2B2 elements. I think that. Go ahead. Yep. You know, one of the key things that we one one of the things that we strive to uh, maintain is the current level of compatibility with I2B2. Um, so as we've gone through 16.1, 16.2, and now the 17.1 development. We have not added any new additional I2B2 functionality to Transmart, uh, such as the modifiers or things like consents and whatnot. Um, uh, but those are things that we're looking to do in more of the context of an I2B2 Transmart project. So we've been talking with, uh, with Paul Aviak. He, in fact, has uh, a version of I2B2 Transmart that he's implemented and uh, has uh, shown, I think, previously the, the M. Haynes uh, demonstration and the uh, NCAT Spare Disease Registry. Um, but overall, uh, we're looking for ways to try and, and integrate some of these key things in the future. But you won't see new I2V2 functionality in either 16.2 or 17.1 at, at this point in time, but hopefully in the future. OK. <clears throat> and um, Ward from The Hive reminds us that, yeah, Transmore Batch does work with 16.2. Um, and, and I guess there is some work um, on modifiers in 17.1, but I think we'll hear more about that uh, in the coming year. We'll, we'll, probably, we'll certainly have a focus on that in uh, one of the next upcoming community meetings. Yeah, I've also been working with Ward on features of 16.2 right. that we can define for 17.1 and, uh, right. and check right. that everything's working. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I think the level of coordination and, and you know, an effort between the releases is also uh, increased quite a bit so you know we're um, you know we're trying to, to get this all going um, yeah and word does say that would you if you want to say something I can unmute you 
but um, you know, he says that the modifiers are in 17.1, so that that's being done. Um, yeah. So you know, we'll again we'll talk more about 17.1 in, in great detail uh, in the coming weeks. So, um, but with that, I think we'll we'll draw to a close. Uh, again, thanks everyone for your uh, uh, joining us this morning. Uh, also, uh, all the hard work that's gone into the 16.2. Uh, we're really looking forward to finishing this up and getting it um, delivered. And, um, you know, please, if you have some time, take a look at it. Give us your feedback. Please enter any bugs that you see. There's no bug that's insignificant. Uh, it's always important from the developers to, to make sure that we know the kinds of things that you see that you, you have questions about or, or whatever. So, um, any, but again, thank you. Have a uh, have a great uh, holiday, and uh, we'll we'll be back uh, next year with a whole new set of monthly community meetings. Thanks, everyone.